Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm thoroughly um, sympathising with anyone who has hay fever this morning. It's difficult. Um, Carol, take care. Thank you as well to your camera person for those gorgeous views as well. Hazy blue sky. It is a grand scene. It's, it's grand. Uh, 7.53 is the time now. So it's like something from one of the, uh, like a... Um, uh, Indiana Jones film, isn't it? One of those moments where archaeologists are looking for something and then, eureka, they find Beautiful. it. So here we go. Archaeologists have unveiled one of the biggest Anglo-Saxon burial grounds in Britain and they say the discovery is of national importance, provides a valuable insight into life in the 5th century. Now, this is the site in Wendover in Buckinghamshire, which was excavated as part of the HS2 project. Nearly 140 graves were found full of jewellery, weapons, and domestic items. Well, let's talk to someone who's going to be very excited about this, as we should be, historian Dan Snow. Hello, Dan. As you should be, exactly. It's, yeah, one, of, it's a great, one of the great finds of my lifetime. Really? Now, that's a big thing to say. One of the great finds of your lifetime. Tell me what. <laughs> well, I'm very young, like, obviously, let's not forget <laughs> that. But, um, no, it, I think this is, this is 138 graves. We've got 141 burials in it. I've been following it all the way from excavation and I've been to see the sites and the, the artifacts as they're being conserved and learned about, studied in Cardiff. It, each, each one of these graves would be kind of national news. We found an extraordinary grave from the most unknown part of the last 2000 years of our history, recorded history, the most obscure is probably the 5th and 6th centuries. After the Romans leave, it, it's sort of we, it's what people used to call the Dark Ages, early medieval period. One of those graves would be fascinating. Here are 140 odd of them, and so it is. It's quite. It's mind blowing. We are. We are learning a huge amount about this very misunderstood or faintly understood period of our history. Now, Dan, as you're talking, we are looking at some of the pictures here, and and we are. Yeah, we're just seeing some of the. I mean, it's very intricate work, isn't it? With just what you know, paintbrushes just dabbing away bits of earth to find things. Talk to me about the skeletons first of all, because. Uh, is there a moment, uh, uh, is it me being a bit sort of uh, over emotional about this, but you're looking at people ultimately, you're, you're discovering skeletons, and I know it's of historical and archaeological importance, but it's a burial site, isn't it? I mean, what's the atmosphere like as you uncover those things? Yes, that's a very good point. There's, there's definitely a respect, and an, or it's very different from excavating, say, a Roman villa where you just go, where's the mosaic? Let's get, let's get this out of the way. You know, this is something you're each grave. That there's, there's, you don't know what you're going to find. Um, you're finding um, a, a, objects buried with these people, their, their weapons, but in, often jewellery, often there's an extraordinary glass Roman bowl, amazing state of preservation. There's two beakers. I've only ever found one like that in the UK in history, and they found two at this site. Jewellery. So you're getting a sense of personality. You're getting a sense of what their life was like. Rose Callis, who's the osteologist from Infra, she's one of the brilliant um, people working with She was pointing out that lots of personal grooming effects, and then she was showing me the effect on their teeth. Quite a few had gingivitis, a bit of gum disease there, so they would have slightly bad breath. But um, who knew that the early medieval people were obsessed with personal grooming, or grooming lots of picks for teeth and, and skin and, and tweezers and things. So the, you get a real sense of these people who are, there are people alive today who are descended from these people. Uh, and and they are even though they're fifteen hundred years ago. Why were it was it? Why did you say uh, used to be referred to as the Dark Ages? Um, was it is it because it just used to be thought of such a miserable time, which perhaps may not be if they cared about the the way they looked with grooming. Well, this is what's really interesting about this site. So I'm getting this is a big subject, but the Roman Empire sort of leaves Britain. Romanness stays behind. There are still people living and acting in Roman ways in parts of Britain, but the Roman Empire leaves. And, and so, and, and the bureaucrats, the civil servants, many of the people that would write the histories kind of leave as well. So there's not much written evidence from the fifth and sixth centuries. And so traditionally we're like, hey, no bureaucrats, no tax, no writing, sounds terrible. Uh, what we're realizing now is actually maybe things weren't quite as bad. There was violence, of course, and, and there was trade dislocation, but this cemetery is a reminder that people were still living uh, the, the sort of settled lives. There's about 300 years maybe of of, 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 of continuous burial here. This is a community. This is, you're seeing trade goods. You're seeing... Um, so, so it's not quite the kind of absolute nasty, brutish and short, Mad Max vibe that, that some people have thought that this early, quote-unquote, Dark Ages might have been. So it's, it's really shining a light on that period. 
Dan, are we able to tell much about their, uh, the, the individuals, about their physiology, how tall they were, what they, what they looked like, what, what, can, or what age they lived to? What can we tell about that? Yeah, well, that work is ongoing, and there's going to be a huge amount of stuff. We're going to be able to DNA, we're going to be able to isotope analysis, we're going to be able to find out, for example, this is the great one, whether they were actually Germanic settlers. So these Saxons, these, these people that would become the Anglo-Saxons, as we'd call Jutes and, and settlers from Northern Europe who arrived. But were they, were they outside invaders, or were they British people who had been sort of, had a sort of Roman identity, who were now switching over to a more pagan Saxon identity. We're going to learn all that. So we're going to learn where they grew up. We're going to learn about their levels of nutrition through their lives. We, we do know only one, there's only one evidence for violent death, and that's pretty big evidence. It's a knife stuck straight to the stomach, into the spine. The knife is still there. That's, we have only one um, violent uh, incident, we think, from these graves. Well, it's the um, only one we you've seen. So, it's the only one you've it, seen, isn't it? It's the, only one, it's the only one we've got obvious evidence for. You're absolutely right. Um, but th- th- about two about thirds of them were adults, a third of them were children. Um, it's the oldest people were only seem to be in their 40s, which I regard as the prime of life. But uh, <laughs> so the sort of. And, and so and we are, as I say, we, there's things about teeth. So modern science and archaeology, osteology, are going to be able to tell so much. We're so exciting. Nowadays, when you find a body like this, it's, it's, a, it's a little portal and you can just explore an entire period. The science is amazing. So we're learning more and more as, as exactly. the days go on. Do you know what I've learned from you today? As much as all of that is fascinating and it's brilliant, and thank you, because you always bring so much enthusiasm to this, is that you are very young and that um, 40s are the prime of life. And I, I yes, I'm with you 100%. That's correct. That is absolutely correct. Lovely to see you this morning. Thank you for your enthusiasm this morning. Um, Dan Snow there. That he loves one, that it, is one he? very happy historian. Yeah, well, very he happy. did say it was like one of the finds of his lifetime. Yeah. Very really enthusiastic. Uh, we will be back shortly with the headlines. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a rock. Ah. The Bob Boys. Yeah, just hold it for a minute. I saw never call them bad women. They manufacture toys, you don't manufacture stars. I was. A Hollywood movie. You sure? Everybody suggests I'm not a real person, but I am. Talent is, is the whole thing. Hollywood women take over. Thursday nights on BBC Four and iPlayer. Can't stop me.